Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the Cybertruck's half-empty battery pack, $25,000 Tesla cancellation updates, and more. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. First up today, with the new Model 3 that's Tesla's most recent vehicle, we're having to see them go through all the growing pains, again, of bringing it up to scale. It's not as big of an undertaking as we're seeing in the ramp of the Cybertruck, which is entirely new, but Model 3 production is definitely not where it was with the previous version. While many customers have taken delivery of their new Model 3s, a ton are facing delays that leave their delivery timelines up in the air, especially when it comes to certain options like the interior. Many customers who placed an order for the black and white interior have seen their estimated delivery dates move as much as 12 times. A lot of those customers placed their orders back in January, and if their current estimates of late May are accurate, that would be a five month wait between order and delivery. As it stands right now, we're not sure how many white interiors have been shipped, if any at all. I personally haven't seen photos or anything from any customer taking delivery of a white interior on the Model 3 refresh. Similarly, customers who ordered long-range versions of this car are facing a lot of delays relative to the standard range version. Long-range customers are also seeing delays back as far as May. The reason this is worth mentioning is because those delays to May got progressively longer. When ordering in January, Tesla didn't indicate that long of a wait, so there must be something holding deliveries back in the supply chain, but Tesla isn't really communicating things. A lot of customers were fully expecting their cars to be delivered by now and are expressing frustrations with the whole delivery process. As it stands right now, Tesla is just pushing delivery dates back without offering any explanation as to why or what's going on. Delays are a normal part of a production scaling process, but Tesla could definitely improve their communication on this topic. The new Model 3 is a great vehicle, and I hope Tesla is able to fix these slowdowns soon so that more customers can get their hands on it. The ramp of this refresh in Fremont is definitely taking longer than Giga Shanghai. Meanwhile, while Tesla is working on bringing that car up to speed, their most popular model is likely getting a new paint color in the United States. Quicksilver was first introduced in Berlin and then Shanghai, but we are starting to see it appear on US Model Ys out of Giga Texas. Here we can see a bunch out in the lot waiting for delivery, even before Tesla has announced this color. I saw some of these Quicksilver vehicles when I was in Europe last year, and it should be an exciting option for a lot of customers. While Tesla is also expanding their wrap service and available colors, it's really exciting to see them continually offering new paint options in addition to their standard colors. At the very least, it changes up the five colors they have sold on these cars for years and gives a new look to these cars as they ship more and more of them. Next up today, the latest Cybertruck updates including some big details for its battery capacity. First, the Cybertruck has been touring all around. Tesla was touring all around New York with the Cybertruck towing a Model Y and advertising the fact that the Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. Many spotted this around locations like the Met and much more. Definitely a very creative way for Tesla to be showing off the Cybertruck while advertising their best seller. As for Cybertruck resales, many thought that they were entirely dead since Tesla is scaling production quickly and one on cars and bids didn't sell, but one was spotted up for auction seen as high as $242,000 before closing its sale. It's the top spec Cyber Beast, but still that's over twice the normal price at the Foundation Series levels, which is remarkable. It's incredible to see what people are willing to pay to get their hands on this vehicle, and it will be more interesting to see how quickly this depreciates. Tesla is truly scaling this up, so sometime in 2025, you could potentially buy a rear-wheel drive Cybertruck that looks exactly the same as this, but comes in around $60,000, a quarter of that cost. The next question though is, will we see Tesla taking legal action against those reselling, since it is something they're allowed to do according to their buyer's agreement? So far, they've been banning Cybertruck flippers from future Tesla purchases. Next up today, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Vessi. Vessi is all about embracing every weather, and their apparel is designed to help you step confidently into any adventure. Imagine you're away from home wearing normal shoes and suddenly there's a downpour. Nothing is worse than suddenly finding yourself with wet socks and Vessi is here to help. Vessi's Stormburst Low Top are your go-to for every setting from city streets to outdoor adventures. They're ideal for mountain trails, wet streets, morning dew walks, and more, and they help you dive into more outdoor activities while knowing your feet will stay dry and cool. I've been wearing these out and they're extremely comfortable. Then I can walk anywhere without fear. Take them to the river, step into some water, walk along the beach, and my feet stay dry. Here I am hosing them down and my feet stayed completely dry. Their weekend sneakers are your perfect companion for unpredictable weather, and they transition perfectly between a casual workday and a weekend adventure. They have a range of colors and styles, so they're all about style, practicality, and protection against the elements in one package. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash Ryan Shaw, linked below, or scan the QR code on screen. 
Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. BMW was spotted with a Cybertruck near their R&D center in Munich, and this is particularly interesting to see. Most expect that they are doing their own teardown of this vehicle to reverse engineer and learn from it. Most expect that they're also probably looking into their 4680 cells and steer-by wire systems, but they could also be interested in everything this truck brings, like how it's made. I personally love as well that you just cannot hide this truck, no matter how much you try. That's extremely intentional on Tesla's part. As for demand for this truck and Tesla balancing production there, Tesla has updated their website to reflect a 2025 date for any vehicle you order today. This used to show 2024 and 2025 for specifically the rear wheel drive, but now all three specs of this truck say 2025. That's interesting because it somewhat reflects the fact that they are sold out through 2024, but there are also the considerations of the foundation series upcharge, some customers getting accelerated deliveries, and then Tesla sitting on over 1 million pre-orders. So I'm not entirely sure what this reflects because if you order today, it seems very unlikely you'll take delivery in 2025. With that said, we have seen a lot of very interesting things lately with the Cybertruck and its range. At this point, it's pretty well known that the Cybertruck underdelivered on its range. Say all the positives you can about this truck, but Tesla originally announced a tri motor 500 plus mile range version. Instead, they delivered 320 miles of range and have talked about a range extender that should come in the future. Inside though, it appears the Cybertruck has room for a lot more battery. All around the Cybertruck, we see signs of future proofing. The first thing Monroe Live noticed in their teardown was that there are open connectors for the pack, and we soon discovered that with a retrofit, this would enable the Cybertruck to wirelessly charge in the future. Now though, Monroe has made a much bigger discovery. The Cybertruck's battery pack is not full. Here's the video of the pack opening, a preview of Monroe's full video coming soon, and from that we have learned that with this structural battery pack, it's about half empty. In response to this, the Cybertruck's lead engineer said, I'd say it's half full, definitely confirming that this is exactly what we are seeing. Right now, the Cybertruck's battery is 123 kilowatt hours, enabling up to 340 miles of range on the long range version. But in theory, it could, in its current form, support a battery pack that has twice as much capacity within it, somewhere around 246 kilowatt hours of capacity. This is the pack size that enables crazy 500 plus mile ranges on trucks, and would ultimately make this the best possible tool for towing and more. The thing is, for now, Tesla hasn't really needed that, and the charging tech on top of this needs to make that make sense, without you needing to charge for two hours hours after driving 400 miles. For that, we have also learned that the Cybertruck is getting its first charging improvement via software. Drew Buglino said Cybertruck charge curve improvements are coming over the air later this quarter to unlock up to 154 miles recovered in 15 minutes. That's about a 20% improvement on this truck's charging speed, which is great to see. Currently, Tesla says it gets 128 miles in 15 minutes, so that difference is noticeable. Ultimately, the Cybertruck's charging curve is still catching up to Tesla's other vehicles, since it's their new battery tech, but in the future, we could see a number of things come for the battery. First, more improvements like this and software to get their 4680 battery cells up to snuff. Then, with this half-full battery pack, they could add double the amount of 4680 cells or optimize further with taller cells. 4680 directly references the size of the battery cell, 46 millimeter diameter and 80 millimeter height. Recently, Rivian announced that their R2 will use 4695 cells, similar cell, but 15 millimeters taller. So we could see Tesla make a future version of their new batteries that simply fills this whole pack with the same number of cells, a 46160 or similar. Of course, it's not that simple, and this requires a lot of engineering, and has its own issues that that brings up by making the cell taller, but this half-full Cybertruck battery pack is very interesting to see. Yes, they're planning for a range extender, but the pack itself is already engineered to be able to theoretically support double the capacity. That's exciting for the future of this truck and really shows Tesla's strategy. This truck is selling no problem with an elevated price and lower range. Long term though, when it's scaled, they can bring out more capacity when they truly need it to compete. Next up today, Tesla has been in the middle of a news cycle tsunami since the unusual unveil last week of their next generation vehicle. To give a brief recap, here's what happened so far. We've talked for a while now that Tesla has been working on a $25,000 EV platform to finally deliver a truly affordable electric vehicle to the masses. Simultaneously, Tesla has been developing their full self-driving technology with the idea of eventually implementing it into their upcoming robo-taxis, fully autonomous ride-sharing vehicles that wouldn't even have a steering wheel or pedals. A few days ago, Reuters reported that Tesla had scrapped plans for their $25,000 EV, which prompted Elon to quickly refuse that claim on X. 
Soon after that, Sawyer Merritt posted that he believed that since the plan was always for these two vehicles to share a platform, that maybe they're just being rolled into one vehicle project. Elon Musk responded with an eyes emoji that seemed to corroborate this notion. Then just a few hours later, he announced on X that they would be unveiling the RoboTaxi on August 8th of this year. That's a ton of news and information to come out in such a short time, but we've since learned some more that makes the situation a little more complicated. Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, responded independently on the whole canceled affordable EV debacle. When asked about the state of the vehicle, he responded, I would just stay tuned. Just don't always believe what you read. As always with Tesla, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but there is likely much more than meets the eye here. It might very well be that they plan to unveil this fully autonomous robotaxi in August, and then proceed making both that car and the manually driven version of this car on the same platform. We don't know that for certain, and we'll have to wait and see what Tesla announces at that event in August. Having a fully autonomous robotaxi is still a pretty big gamble for Tesla, and there are a lot of roadblocks to its success. Not only is it necessary that the software continues improving to the point that it's better than a human, but it will require a few major steps to be able to drive without a human operator. First, Tesla is going to have to accept full liability for these cars once they hit the road. They haven't had to do that so far since human drivers are currently responsible to take over if something goes wrong with the self-driving system. If these robotaxis truly drive themselves and don't even have a steering wheel, then if it makes a mistake that causes an accident, Tesla would have to be fully liable. Second will be what is likely the longest and most strenuous part of the robotaxi's rollout, regulation. Tesla has often been at odds with a lot of regulators over their FSD and autopilot software, and this vehicle would be an even bigger step for them. These agencies would have to approve the first fully autonomous vehicle to drive itself outside of a geofenced zone. This software would have to prove that it can handle itself in almost any or all driving scenarios, and that may be difficult for Tesla to prove. While Tesla has made a ton of progress on their full self-driving software, especially on the most recent V12 update, you still have to wonder whether it's ready to be let completely off the leash. I've used the most recent update quite a bit since it was released, and while it's definitely impressive, it still does make weird mistakes at times that you have to take over for. Still, it would likely be a while before these robotaxis ever hit the road, and in that time, we could see some pretty huge advancements in the tech. The Tesla AI team shared a graph that shows FSD has driven a cumulative 1 billion miles. That's an insane number, and we can see how rapidly those numbers are accelerating in growth. With the recent FSD free trial, we could see that number hit 2 billion much sooner than later. Elon Musk announced that Tesla's investment into quote, training compute, gigantic data pipelines, and vast video storage will be well over $10 billion cumulatively this year. Tesla is making huge investments into AI and self-driving because they think it's going to pay off majorly in the long term. If they can keep this pace up in investment and research, we might see progress into FSD improve exponentially from here. We can't know for certain what Tesla is working on behind the scenes right now, and we'll have to wait until the RoboTaxi event to learn for certain. What do you think though? How long will it be until Tesla can achieve full level five self-driving? Would you ride in a fully autonomous Tesla RoboTaxi in a couple years? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Next up today, we have a bunch of updates about Tesla's expansion across the globe. Every day, Tesla's fleet is expanding and their market reach is growing, which should leave us pretty optimistic. South Korea is a major global auto market, and Tesla has just made some big steps in further increasing their presence in the country. At the beginning of the year, Tesla only offered the base trim of the Model Y, and the upgraded Model 3 was not available there at all. As of a few days ago, Tesla officially opened up orders there for the long range and performance Model Y, as well as beginning sale of the upgraded Model 3. Current estimates for delivery place that car at being about three to six months out. Even though Tesla only had limited offerings in that country, they still dethroned Mercedes to become the second largest auto importer in South Korea. As it stands now, they are less than 500 vehicles behind the leading importer, BMW. China has been proving a bit tough for Tesla lately, with a ton of competition from local automakers who offer more affordable options. Despite that, Tesla has had a bit of a surge in that country lately, and is still doing a lot to promote it further. Tesla's sales in China grew by nearly 50% this March over the previous month. February had been particularly rough for Tesla China, seeing an 18.87% drop in sales year over year, but this March realigned them with the previous year's sales. In the end, Tesla ended their quarter strongly in China, with 17,300 new registrations coming in the last week of March alone. That week marked their highest sales of the year so far. A Wall Street analyst estimated that Tesla sold around 133,700 vehicles in Q1 in China, which is still lower than last year, but good overall. To further promote sales in China, Tesla is offering some incentive programs that will help to make their cars more attractive. 
Customers who order a new Model 3 or Y before the end of April and put a down payment of $11,000 or more will be eligible for three years of interest-free financing. If you trade in an older vehicle, you could be eligible for five years of interest-free payments as well. New customers will also receive 90 days of enhanced autopilot as an added bonus. Over in Sweden, Tesla has seen continuing success in that market, albeit with some caveats. The company is still dealing with challenges caused by union strikes in that region, but despite that, Tesla is still on top there. This past March, the Model Y was the most registered car in that country at 2011 units, handedly beating the next vehicle, the XC60, produced by native company Volvo. While many competing models saw growth numbers as high as around 90% year over year, the Model Y actually saw a 37.2% decrease in sales from last March. Clearly, Tesla is still doing well, but they are at the risk of slipping in the market if they don't do something big. In the US, Giga Texas, where the Cybertruck Model Y and 4680 battery cells are produced, has just reached a pretty major milestone. That factory posted their employment statistics, and they have officially become the largest private employer in Austin, Texas. As they gear up to produce their affordable EV out of Giga Texas, that factory is clearly at the center of Tesla's major plans for the future. They have programs set up in the community to create career paths for local high school graduates, and they are clearly working hard to continue growing that factory. Even though Tesla had a bit of a rough Q1 this year, the automaker is still doing a lot worth being optimistic over. They are further expanding across the globe and are gearing up to launch some exciting new products. I anticipate that any slowdowns they are currently experiencing should be temporary, and it won't be long before they are even further back on top across the world. Next up today, we often see Tesla roll out a lot of interesting incentives at the end of a quarter in order to give their sales a last minute boost. That could include free supercharger miles, free trials of FSD, and some steep discounts on inventory vehicles. One of the most popular incentives that Tesla rolls out from time to time now is a free transfer of full self-driving when you take delivery of a new vehicle. They most recently relaunched that incentive for this past quarter, but now that we are over a week into Q2, Tesla is doing something very curious. They are continuing to let customers transfer FSD onto newly purchased vehicles. Tesla's website still has the original timeline on display saying you need to take delivery by March 31st in order to qualify, so we're not entirely sure how long this incentive will last. All of these incentives were originally put in place as a way to drive last minute sales before their end of quarter reports. That didn't end up being enough as Tesla reported a pretty rough quarter for sales overall. They currently have a ton of steep discounts on inventory vehicles as a way to clear out their backlog of 46,000. That's a ton of inventory for them to keep on hand, so these discounts and the continuing availability of FSD transfers could help clear out some of those vehicles. Personally, I think FSD transfers should be a permanent thing at this point that Tesla offers. If someone saw the potential in this software and paid a lot of money for an incomplete product so that it may eventually deliver on what was promised, then these customers should be able to roll it forward onto their future vehicles, at least until the software actually reaches the level of autonomy that was promised. Otherwise, it only stands to discourage loyal Tesla customers Customers, the same ones who helped fund this software with their purchase from upgrading their cars. At the very least, this continuing incentive could be a sign that FSD transfers may be a more common thing going forward. I think Tesla should be affording their customers every possible opportunity to use and show off this software on their latest and greatest vehicles. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the refreshed Model 3 after two months, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.